and the endoscopic anterior skull based surgery with a very demonstrative in videos and live surgeries on his page. Dr. Yasbin, sorry for delay. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Yasbin. We're in Egypt, very Good short. Evening. So, uh, I would like to thank you for this invitation. I'm very glad to uh, present our work about the new technique of the resection of the intratympanic uh, tumor, vascular tumor. Uh, so I share the, the screen. Is it okay? Yes, it's working well, yes. Okay, so uh, I am uh, Professor Yazid Yaziban, ex-professor of NT at, at the University of Algiers, and actually I'm in private clinic uh, named Le Mondarini Clinic uh, in, in Algiers, Algeria. Donc, uh, I uh, would like to thank you uh, for uh, this invitation. Donc, to have uh, the, the, the opportunity to speak uh, uh, about uh, our experience in the, the treatment of this uh, lesion vascular tumor. Uh, so we uh, so we start with uh, we start with a few remainders of this uh, pathology and relation the tympanic paraglioma or glomus tympanicus. Uh, is a communist meaning tumor of the middle ear, is a highly vascular tumor, encapsulated by, and characterized by uh, its uh, slow growing, but locally uh, invasive by uh, recording the bone erosion. Uh, some possibility for the extension via the pathways of less resistance ISLs, school based foramina and uh, uh, like a uh, station tube. Uh, this tumor is originating from paragonglionic tissue of the middle ear with station present through the mesotempanum. Uh, about the epidemiology, this tumor uh, is rare. The annual incidence is one case per 1.3 million people. Uh, there are some uh, genetic factors uh, with uh, autosomal dominant transmission. The, it's uh, most commonly seen in the fifth decade, and the commonly it affects the left ear. What about the examination and the symptoms? The constant symptoms is the unilateral pulsatile tinnitus, and uh, sometimes when the tumor is uh, uh, is large, we can have the hearing loss, uh, exactly the condition hearing loss. The endoscopic examination we found. Uh, the typical uh, image of the uh, reddish uh, retrotempanic uh, mass. And uh, the most important complementary exam is the injected CT scan and this uh, eventually CT uh, angiography and MRI. It depends on the extension of the lesion. Uh, what about the management? We know, we know. We, we, we know that uh, the surgical excision is the only effective treatment, and usually uh, we, we use the transmastoid and transcanal uh, approach using the uh, operative microscope. And of course, the evolution of uh, the endoscopic ear surgery has allowed uh, for an, an alternative approach uh, to manage this uh, vascular uh, tumor. Uh, this is a recent approach, of course, and uh, this is the theme of uh, our study, of our work. Uh, the aim of the study is to assess uh, the feasibility and the effectiveness of this technique as an alternative to conventional surgery. So uh, we have operated 30 patients uh, between uh, 2018 and 2021. Uh, this is a few images of the endoscopic examination. We see the typical uh, image of the uh, reddish retrotempanic mass in uh, different uh, extension. This is the small one and the, uh, the large one here. Uh, we did the, uh, the CT scan with, uh, in uh, the all patients. Uh, and we, uh, we see here the enhancing retrotempanic tissue failing the middle ear. And that allows to us to, to have staging uh, 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 Glass Oak Jackson classification. Uh, don't uh, 
This is the, the types of the tumor. The, the type one is the small tumor to promontory, and type two is the tumor completely failing in the middle ear space. The type three, the tumor is completely failing in the middle ear and extending to a um, uh, mastoid process. And the greater tumor is the, the tumor when uh, reaches the community and uh, reaches reach the middle ear completely and extending into the mastoid or through tympanic membrane to fail the external auditory canal. So uh, we use in our work the full HD camera and the 30 and the zero endoscopes. The surgery uh, is uh, we do the surgery in general uh, under the general anesthesia. Uh, we use uh, frequently the radio frequency bipolar and the monopolar cauterization. Uh, sometimes we use the third operative hand uh, or, uh, and uh, uh, the holder of the endoscope uh, when the tumor is uh, is is uh, is large. Uh, and the, uh, finally, uh, we use the curved section annula and catheter to uh, to do the cauterization of the tumor. How about our surgical procedure? That uh, two different situations arose. The first is situation when the when the tumor is uh, small, uh, the removal was relatively easy, and in second uh, in, in second situation the tumor uh, was large, encompassing the ossicular churn. Uh, in this case, the removal was more difficult, and uh, the preservation of the ossicular churn is a real challenge in uh, this uh, surgery. So uh, I have chosen the three uh, movies to explain our surgery the uh, first case the first case uh, it was a type 1 tumor the small tumor and uh, here we see the membrane tympanic and the, the reddish little tympanic lesion here so we do the infiltration after we do the incision circular incision of the external auditory canal, front of the membrane tympanic. So uh, it, it was a circular incision. And after we detach the flap and we open the mucosa of the middle ear gently, We emit the uh, flap, and we see here the tumor behind the membrane, temp the tympanic membrane here. We see the tumor, and we try to dissect the anterior part of this tumor. After this time, the aim of, the, of this surgery is. Uh, to cauterize the pedicle of the tumor located in the promontory. We use classically the bipolar in the surface of the tumor. So the surgery uh, is not any bleeding in uh, the surgery when the tumor is small. We dissect with the bottom the anterior part of the tumor. I mean, the ossicular chain is here. This is the right side, of course. We continue the cauterization of the tumor of the pedicle exactly here. After the mass is free of attach and we can remove it gently without bleeding. This is the situation where we replace the 
flap gently. This is the situation of an relative easy case of removing of this vascular tumor. In the second movie, the, the tumor is large and look in this CT scan, the enhancing of the middle ear, extended the process, mastoid process and station tube. In first, we make the incision. We detach the flap gently. This is the corda tampone. We see the tumor here. We dissect the malleus and gently we elevate the flap, the anterior part of the, fl the flap. We try to expose the most part of the tumor here. And we cauterize the surface of the tumor. It allowed to get a retraction of the tumor and uh, to reduce the volume of the tumor. And you see the structures of the, in, of the middle ear. The, the anchors and the steps. Cauterization allows to have retraction and to reduce the tumor. The dissection in the ephotemporal region site. Now we see the tumor. We see the different corners of the tumor. We cauterize the pedicle of the tumor. The Jacobson nerve here and the hypotampanic site of the tumor. And we see not bleeding when we go slowly and gently. We can, after the, the detachment of the flap, to get large viewer, wide viewer of the tumor. This is the flap. This is the station tube and the anterior part of the tumor. The tumor is mobilized and removed gently without bleeding. That is the final view of the surgery not a residual tumor in the file, the ossicular chain, the flap here, the hypotempanum here. So this is an interesting case, the, the, the most difficult case, when we have a complete enhancement in the middle ear with encompassing of the ossicular chain, completely embedded in the tumor and the extension here to the station tube and the mastoid process. Uh, here, the surgery is more difficult according to the blading in this surgery. See here the aspect of the membrane tympani and the external auditory canal. We see the infiltration of the external auditory canal. We make the incision and the bleeding starts just after the incision. And here we need the use of the third hand to hold the endoscope to get the section and to get two instruments, to use two instruments here, we tried to open 
the middle air, the mucus of the middle air, but it was very, very difficult. The tumor is front of S. More difficult surgery here. Slowly, slowly, and cauterization and the use of the cauterization, classical cauterization, in begin in beginning of the of the of the surgery to get the retraction and to reduce the tumor slowly. The surgery is more difficult. We use the classical bipolar, radiofrequency bipolar, and here we dissect the malleus. We get more space to manipulate the instrument and uh, to see the corners and the limits of the tumor. See the tumor, the subtle tumor. We use two hands for the section, so we can dissect with two hands even in uh, ear surgery as uh, in the nose surgery. Here we see the malleus, a section of the tumor for cauterization, and with the cotton, we dissect the ossicular chain. See here the increase, it pulls here, the curl that is here. Here, this is the tumor. And in this case, especially, we uh, we do the partialization of the of the of the of the, of the mass to have more space to have more space to uh, manipulate and uh, to, have, to have to see the limits of the tumor and what it remains in the middle ear. In this case. The, the mammalian tympanic is endomaged. So you see here, the ossicular chain is preserved, completely preserved, the around the windows, hormonally, anterior region, the, what it remains of the tumor in the, in the anterior part, the middle ear, front of the station tube here, like, you see here the tube, and this is the part of the panel here. We check the posterior region, the facial recess, to see if is there a tumor. And in finally, we do the tympanoplasty, catecholaminous tympanoplasty. So, what about our result? So we have uh, uh, 11 women and two men, and the extremes of the ages 36 to, se to 73 uh, years. Repartition about uh, evolution for the, the extension of the lesion. So we have uh, half of case are uh, small, and the other half are uh, a larger tumor. What about the quality of the resection? We have the total removing of all cases uh, and uh, no change was detected in bone condition after the surgery, but we have an improved in said case of the, uh, of the hearing uh, uh, after surgery. One tympanoplasty is needed in one, in one case, of course, uh, duration hospitalizers is one day, and we, we have done in enough cases ambulatory surgery. Uh, we have two tympanic uh, perforation as complication, and we have not uh, uh, facial palsy or ossicular chain injury. No recurrence after uh, 23 months of following. And uh, in the end, the tendencies that spread after surgery in most of cases.
This is the CT scan, post operative CT scan. We see here the clearance of the uh, middle ear. No residual enhancing the tumor in the middle ear. And the osseocular chain is intact here. This kitchen. So, uh, reviewing uh, uh, in the uh, literature, uh, reviewing, so we can uh, see, uh, we, we can say that. Uh, uh, this, this procedure is a, a recent procedure in the surgery of the uh, vascular tumor of the middle ear. Uh, this procedure is feasible and effective uh, technique. The surgeons are encouraged by the, adv by the advancement of the, in uh, endoscopic ear surgery and the quality of the image. Uh, and the most difficult time is uh, in this procedure was the hemostasis and different uh, uh, procedures are used as radiofrequency, monopolar, uh, laser, uh, etc. Uh, and the, the uh, added benefit in this approach is the visualization of the each of the corners in the uh, of the tumor in, in, in sites that are difficult to explore with uh, with uh, a classic uh, procedure using the microscope. Uh, this is the few uh, photos to demonstrate the, uh, the 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 good view of the endoscope in uh, the approach of this of this uh, tumor. We see here the parganglioma in the uh, right ear. Here the ossicular channel membrane tympanic. The good exposition. Uh, using the, uh, the endoscope. Other, uh, uh, other uh, pictures, see here the left ear, the tumor here, the operative uh, image uh, demonstrate, uh, showing the uh, cauterization of the mass and uh, the visibility of all structures of the middle ear. The right ear, you see in beginning of the surgery, the tumor here, and the final view of the middle ear, see the ossicular chain preserved, the, the stachylian tube here, the uh, round windows, and the hypotampanic is uh, free of tumor. Other picture here, see the tumor, the right ear. So the, we can see the procedure is safe, quick, and effective. Uh, total removing are observed in all in case of uh, which is uh, published. And the most operative period is sample and short uh, post-operative uh, periods. In conclusion, we can see that the endoscopic approach of the intratempanic paraglioma is a minimally invasive transcranial approach is an efficient surgical procedure due to the better visualization of the surgical file with the endoscope. The procedure was safe and uh, the procedure uh, allowed a comfortable surgery for, the, both, for both surgeon and the patient. And the need, of course, a good experience in endoscopy ear surgery. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Dr. Yasbin, for the amazing and uh, demonstrative presentation, indeed, and uh, demonstrative videos. Deep thanks, my dear Professor Dr. Yasbin. Uh, our next speaker and the cultural aim of our uh, prestigious gathering, Dr. Zubair Dula Khan from South Africa. Dr. Dula Khan has been presenting and endoscopic ear surgery in many meetings and conducting two workshops on endoscopic ear surgery at two universities in South Africa. Dr. Dora Khan presentation titled Endoscopic Ear Surgery, the South African Experience. Sorry, Dr. Dora Khan for uh, the delay, and, but we uh, put the fruitful presentation at the end. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. You may you share the screen, please. Share the screen, okay. I'd like to congratulate everybody who's still still around listening to 
Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, it's working, but please okay. make it uh, for the screen, for the screen, please. I'm just trying to move this. It's in the way of my. <coughs> make it for first. Screen. Yes, yes. No, no, no. no. Uh, you can make it for the for the screen uh, from the bottom of the uh, page. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, it's working right. well. Yes. Okay. Um, I purposefully has haven't made this very a long presentation, uh, knowing that this is will have been quite late in at night. So I'm speaking to you from Cape Town here. The picture of uh, Cape Town, which uh, St. Mayor showed earlier, also, and we work in the same town. Um, and it's uh, thank you for the privilege for letting me speak today and share my thoughts on uh, endoscopic ear surgery and uh, what I think uh, think the way forward is. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to many things that uh, it's interesting to note that, you know, the many things that I would, would want to have to have said have been so clearly, uh, you know, expressed by all the speakers. And it's interesting to note that how uh, so many of us from different parts of the world have had such similar experiences. Yet we, um, if we, most of us have embarked on these uh, on these journeys to to convert our uh, or, or to use the endoscope as a as a tool in middle ear surgery um, on our own. And yet uh, we all have very similar experiences. Um, so basically, in South Africa, what happened was in about 2006, uh, Moaz Darabichi came to our shores and uh, introduced, uh, spoke to us about uh, at one of our con local uh, congresses, and, um, and there was some interesting debate with different uh, with the different speakers from different countries, and uh, that started our interest, especially my interest in in, in looking further into what this tool has to offer. And then, but it was really, um, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, uh, the, my interest was really secured when I uh, attended the course uh, by Dave Fortier and uh, uh, Professor Nogira in 2013. Um, and, and that's when I started using the endoscope slowly with, uh, with grommets and then progressing further to the, uh, all other pathologies. And then we, I attended the World Congresses and then presented, uh, because I saw the great value of this tool, I uh, tried to present it as, as often as I could at our local Congresses. And um, I also went to observe some, some of the experts uh, operating. Um, and we engaged with healthy debates at different journal club meetings. And this has been some wide general acceptance of this tool. And it's more popular with the younger generation, probably because of the uh, the use of the endoscope in in endoscopic sinus surgery. <clears throat> so to date, uh, we have ha I've been on the faculty and coordinator at three universities across the country, um, and in our courses we focus mainly on uh, understanding and orientating the surgeon to middle ear endoscopic anatomy, because um, we find that the endoscopic anatomy and the orientation to the endoscopic uh, different to the uh, orientation that you would uh, see with the microscope. So it is crucial to understand the normal endoscopic 
endoscopic anatomy before tackling difficult cases with distorted anatomy. And so this is highly emphasized. And um, we think these courses are very valuable in, in, in allowing people to get a good feel of the endoscopic anatomy of the middle ear. Uh, the experience has shown that the fresh frozen cadavers allow for the best experience. And delegates have provided excellent feedback and have found these courses very uh, valuable. Um, we, in these courses, we allow dissection uh, into the uh, internal auditory matrix to the cerebral pontine angle, like was described by Professor Muhammad. And uh, if we have time, we uh, show the, uh, the, um, uh, the um, participants some live videos. And, uh, and, and, and then the whole, uh, we, 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 we encourage the delegates to start with small procedures first and, uh, and encourage the, uh, them to go and observe experienced surgeons before, uh, before tackling difficult pathology with the endoscope. So the endoscopes, I'm just going to give you my uh, view of um, the role of the endoscope so far. Um, and I think the endoscopes uh, have contributed in a great way to a better understanding of the anatomy of the middle ear, like, like no other, other instrument has done so far. And so we've been able to delineate the epi, the meso, retro, hypo, postimpanum, even been able to dis, uh, discover new structures. Although things like the ponticulus and the subiculum were structures that we knew about, we very rarely saw, and now we can see better with the endoscope, but we've even discovered new structures like the proteniculus, uh, which Dr. Patel and his group, the Sydney Endoscopic Ear Group, uh, showed this ledge of bone that always leads to the carotid artery. And now we started to think about the ventilation part pathways and the anterior and the posterior isthmus, which we, we were not talking and were not discussing previously. And then now we're thinking about the mastoid as a buffer and, 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 and the importance of nitrogen ventilation. You see, the, here in South Africa, recently many of the uh, uh, petrol stations have advertised the use of nitrogen in the, in the tires of the cars because it, uh, allow, it uh, allows the tire pressure to stay more constant and that will, which will subsequently enhance the longevity of your tires. So this nitrogen ha has an ability to keep an air full space open uh, at a constant, in a constant manner. And so this nitrogen ventilation is an important uh, uh, physiological process that needs to occur in the middle ear for improved middle ear functioning and to improve the amplification of sound. Then we also now understand that the protympanum has the malt area, the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, um, and the epitympanum has a tissue that is uh, more related to gas exchange. And also we, the, uh, the endoscope has allowed us to understand better that cholesteatoma is a disease that spreads from the middle ear to the mastoid and that we have to think about it in that particular way and don't rush to the mastoid without assessing the possibility of taking out the disease only in the middle ear where possible. So as I've used the endoscope uh, for in cholesteatoma, I've learned that uh, I shouldn't spend too much of time um, on um, in the uh, using the uh, the endoscope earlier on, uh, um, in cases where the cholesteatoma extends beyond the lateral semicircular canal. Yeah, for example, this picture shows um, you know the, the cholesteatoma extending into the into the mastoid antrum. And so, when we have preoperative imaging, is important to uh, especially for us who are using the endoscope quite regularly to uh, improve our um, surgical time, uh, because often we, we, we end up playing around with the endoscope for cholesteatoma, trying to see and, and, and the extent that and how far you can, how much you can get out to the trans canal. 
Uh, but once you have this type of picture, it's important to go uh, to the microscope and go post radicularly and push that uh, mass of uh, cholesteatoma from the from the behind forward and then focus on the middle ear after that. So uh, I think that that message to try and if you see cholesteatoma uh, disease beyond the uh, lateral semicircular canal, um, plan to get to the microscope earlier rather than later to save some time. And uh, you, um, we, know, we know and everybody has uh, expressed the importance and how they improve visualization of the sinus tympani and also the protympanum and eustachian tube. The anterior part of the middle ear has always been a difficult place for, uh, for the microscope to, to, uh, to, uh, to show us or to allow us to visualize. And um, the end, whereas with the endoscope, it's, it's quite easy. So this anterior cholesteatoma uh, uh, must be removed and also the focus on the supratubal recess and also cholesteatoma going down into the eustachian tube uh, must be addressed, which can be easily done with the uh, endoscope. And for reconstruction, the tragal cartilage has proven to be quite helpful and, and you can get quite a large tragal cartilage uh, to cover most defects. And because most often, you know, we'll probably be doing a canal wall up procedure, the use of the, or the availability of the non-EPI, DWI, MRI uh, has proven to be most helpful uh, for to uh, check for recurrences. I, I'd like to say a little bit about chronic otitis media. Um, now, I mean, with the, because it's so easy and quick to lift, uh, to, to examine the circular chain, uh, it's important for us to assess the ventilation pathways uh, um, because the endoscopes give us easy access to this place. Um, and uh, in particularly with active chronic otitis media, which is common in our African scenario, we can safely access the attic and rinse it thoroughly. And, um, and I find that this is something uh, that, uh, you know, we were initially discussing in the, as I, I remember in Dubai, um, you know, when Moaz Tarabichi was uh, doing a demonstration of the, um, of a tympanoplasty, and there was a lot of uh, thick mucus in the attic, then um, uh, many people commented. And uh, at that time, uh, Dr. Nguera mentioned you know, that he washes out the attic, you know, uh, to try and get rid of that thick mucus. And um, I must say, I think that this is an important step. It is, could be equivalent to an to a, to a ancel washout, the maxillary ancel washout, which can be easily and safely performed uh, endoscopically without having to drill into the mastoid. Um, and the composite tragal graft has worked best for me uh, and sometimes, though, we do need to use the temporalis fascia when we have very large perforations. My little word on acicular plasty and stapia is so it definitely gives us a superior visualization of the mobility of the chain and also of the, of the, uh, of, of the anatomy when it's difficult. Uh, but we should be aware of other areas of um, uh, hindrance or obstruction to the movement of the ossicular chain, for example, a sclerotic tensor tympani uh, and other ossicular chain abnormalities and tympanosclerosis in the attic. Um, and, and endoscopic approaches should only be carried out by more experienced endoscopic ear surgeons. And finally, just a little word and what I think was the future. So definitely we see more Initially, people were quite skeptical about using the endoscope for the internal auditory meatus, but now with um, uh, Daniel uh, and, um, and Professor Muhammad, we, uh, these, I'm sure these are gonna be the, the, um, the endoscope is gonna be the tool of choice for, for lateral uh, acoustic tumors that can be easily reached through the middle ear. And then uh, in the future, you know, which we saw at the Boston conference, where the, you know, there's going to be a need to deliver the gene vectors to the inner ear to help with press, uh, press bioacuses and other genetic causes of deafness. And the most 
easier, the safest and easiest way will to do that would probably be using the endoscope. Having said that, that's my few little uh, insights that I have um, uh, with regard to the endoscopic ear surgery. And um, I can hand it back over to Walid. Hello. Hello. Deep thanks, Dr. Zubarkhan, for the presentation. And we, as I told you, we make the uh, fruitful presentation at the end. And I'm so sorry for delay, but uh, you know the technical errors. No. Uh, I hope, I hope uh, that all the audience gain the maximum benefits of uh, our high profile guests from Africa and uh, from my dear colleagues and my dear professors in Egypt. And I think the presentation uh, uh, become uh, systematic in its manner and its order for reviewing the endoscopic surgery world. Deep thanks for all, and please keep safe for all. Uh, the uh, end words from uh, my dear professor, Dr. Mohammed Badeddin, please, and Dr. Osama at present, and Dr. Sami at present. Any any possibility, Dr. Uh, Oland will. Uh will give us something or uh, there is still a technical problem? So. Uh, unfortunately, I trying to uh, contact here, but uh, she still has uh, technical uh, difficulties. Yeah, uh, this, I regret that. Actually, Dr. Oland uh, is a very active endoscopic ear surgeon and uh, she, uh, I myself, I saw her uh, operating and uh, presenting and I enjoyed very much her uh, presentations. Uh, I enjoyed actually very, very much the presentations of all our uh, uh, invited uh, international, uh, I, I actually, I shouldn't say international, they are ours, they are Africa. <laughs> so I'm very happy because uh, I really enjoyed them very much and uh, being uh, in contact and open to South Africa and to Sudan and to Algeria, to Morocco, it's a, I myself, I benefited a lot. It's very interesting uh, uh, presentations. And uh, I wish we can make uh, more and more. Uh, Walid, uh, we, we yes. are waiting for you to, to, to make us uh, more uh, uh, forums. <laughs> forums. It's, uh, <laughs> I know this one was very long, but this is the first one. We needed to get the best and the maximum. But uh, we can focus uh, on future meetings on one topic, and we can uh, try to, to cover one topic and discuss it. And that's, I think that would be a very good idea, uh, Walid, about that. Uh, I really thank you, uh, you, Walid, and thank all the participants, and thank uh, all the attendees who stayed with us. And I, am, uh, I congratulate you all. For, uh, for, for your efforts and for your success. And, uh, and I also uh, uh, open for, for those who are actually by definition, because you are in the Pan-African uh, Endoscopic Ear Surgeon Federation. So for, for those who are not members of the IWGs, I, I will just ask them to send me email or even send to Walid, and Walid will forward it uh, to me uh, to be uh, in the membership of the International Working Group, which is by definition is uh, everything is a branch of the International Working Group. I'm looking forward to, 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 to meet you again and meet you in person. And thank you very much, Walid. You can close the sessions uh, by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Before closing, Walid, I would like to thank all the speakers. I would like to thank you, Dr. Mohammed, because of your time. And I know that uh, you're so busy. Uh, special thanks to the Dynamo, the dynamic member of all this meeting from A to Z, Dr. Walid Munir. Uh, no words can express our gratitude to you. Uh, all speakers, actually, I enjoyed every and each presentation of today. and. Uh, to you, just it's astonishing me. To me, 
this is the first meeting that I attended from the start to the end, actually with the, the lot of uh, webinars and online events. With time, you lose your uh, 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 capacity to, to keep on from the first minute until the end. But I find, I find every and each talk, it was so amazing. Um, from our Egyptian fellows to all our brothers and, and friends uh, from Sudan, Algeria, Morocco, South Africa. I enjoyed every and each presentation. And uh, yes, Dr. Mohammed, I think this should be the start. And uh, I see uh, uh, many motivated young fellows that I'm very proud, I'm very happy. And I think this should go on with a better uh, pace, keeping on, because I think this is just the, the, the beginning. This is the first step in our baby born, you can say it gathering or this federation. I think with time, we have to keep on contacting the rest of countries which are not here with us. I think step by step, we can grow and expand and we can even make it like this event specialized for the endoscopic surgery and keep on sessions in our large meetings for such a group and to keep just this uh, uh, pushing uh, 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 steps towards a bigger and bigger events. Thank you very much. And we need, of course, you're the one that you should close and conclude. Thanks, my dear Dr. Sam Abnasir and my Dr. Badr for the kind words. And uh, of course, I want to thank all the attendees and all the, the participants with great presentations uh, I'm really uh, interested in. And uh, please, for all, uh, keep safe. Deep thanks. And uh, keep safe. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Osama. Thank you very much. It was yes. great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a bye. nice time. Paul.